Hello beautiful people, I'm Danny Deheck, thanks for pressing play, hope you're doing well. I want to do something a little bit different tonight, and that is I want to give you some help on trying to get money in. And I've got a couple of examples and things that have happened in my life that I want to share with you, and I want to tell you a few stories, because I'm a bit of a storyteller. Oh, hopefully you'll enjoy this enough to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell so you're notified when my new um, videos do come out. And more importantly, if you hit the like button, I'll just do that. Thank you very much. Uh, it will tell YouTube you like my video. Right, debt collection, getting money in. Why is it so hard? Why do people not pay their bills on time? Is it your fault? Are you not making it clear about what services you're offering? Have you not got terms and conditions? Have you not got a letter of understanding? Well, I'd like to give you some tips, and I'll tell you in a personal experience about mine when I bought myself a business networking company. Now, a business networking company is why I call myself a connector, because I got small groups together, say up to about 20 people in each group, and they used to be small to medium-sized businesses, and they used to have sort of like an insurance guy, we'd have a mortgage broker, we would have um, a, maybe a cleaner, we would have a, a few tradies, sparkies, would we, all these trades would get together in a group, and then they would all help each other and share their experience, knowledge and skills. Now, my format was pretty cool. Uh, when I first purchased this company, the guy that I bought it off wanted $20,000 for it, and he promised me that I would have $60,000 worth of franchise manuals, and my job would just be selling franchises to people that wanted to run these meetings, which was right up my alley at the time. Also, he told me there was 200 members. Some of them were satellite members, which didn't even exist when I did a bit of investigation. But what I liked is when I went along to one of these meetings, there was 37 people that were actively paying $59 a month to be part of this business networking who were really finding it good and it was a really nice community. And we all know about communities, not the hyper community. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people who get together face to face each week and they become your business family. It was one of the most joyful businesses I've ever ran myself. But the problem was getting the money in. And I even did a think tank meeting on giving people tips on how to get the money in. But I want to tell you what the problem was with this business. First thing I want to tell you is how I negotiated with the owner. He wanted $20,000 for the business. I couldn't afford to buy it. So I said to him, I'll give you $10,000 now and I'll pay $500 a month until the remainder's paid off. How do you like that idea? Wasn't happy. No, I'm not doing that. I want them all the money now. Anyway, no one else was interested in buying it, so he agreed to my terms. Anyway, I sold my house about four months in, and I rang him up one day and said, look, the company that you sold me didn't quite have all the bells and whistles that you alleged. I have a lump sum here of $5,000. I'm willing to pay that final and we're done and we're dusted which means I would have only paid $16,000 for the company or I can just carry on with our agreement and pay $500 off a month. He was upset, grumpy, hung up the phone, rang me back two hours later and said I'll take the money. <laughs> but my point is that even though you might negotiate something you can renegotiate. Everyone was happy, he was happy that he'd um, got a lump sum and I was happy that I finally had final ownership of the company. Now the 60 page manual was so I could actually franchise this company called Elite Six New Zealand wide if I wanted to. When I purchased the company, there was a guy in Auckland running a meeting and I wanted to open up in Queenstown and Dunedin. And I needed facilitators. Now, this company was already set up like a multi level marketing company. And I'm going to explain the structure to it so you understand how it all worked. What I didn't know is the company had a pretty bad history and he had actually managed to sell franchises to people and burnt bridges with lots of people. So once I found this out, I wanted to build those bridges back with these facilitators, these people that were promoting the company and get the feel good factor back into the business. And that's exactly what I set about doing. Now, to be a member used to be $10. Bring $10 to every meeting and that would be how they paid for it. Just before I purchased the company, he groomed the company to be sold and I bought it and he made it $59 a month. So I turned up as a new boy in the block. Everyone had just been hit with an increase and everyone wasn't paying cash anymore. Everyone was actually going to have to set up 
uh, pay an invoice, which means we needed an invoicing system. Now that's where I shine because I'm a gizmo and I know how to set up electronic invoicing. So I set up a system where people would get an invoice every month and I wanted to make it automated. So the conditions were that people needed, if they wanted to pay via bank and not credit card, they must set up an automatic payment. Easy peasy, don't have to chase money every month, right? Wrong. People wouldn't put set up an automatic payment. They would not like the idea of setting up an automatic payment. They would tell me they would set up an automatic payment, but every month the money would dribble in in different dates, and it was just painful. So then I introduced, if you pay a year in advance, you would get, you'd only pay for 11 months. So that sounds good. 1,800 people came and went from my business networking over that period of time. Five, five people from memory actually ever paid a year in advance. Most people were small to medium-sized businesses and they simply didn't have cash flow to pay uh, an eight or $900 fee all in one lump. They would rather pay $59 plus GST per month. So they did that. Now, the other thing that the company had that I eventually did away with is they had this thing that if you come along to the business networking groups, you would get your first month free. That was great because if people would come along, they would sit there for a month, they'd hand out all their business cards, they'd cause all the dis disruptions, and then they wouldn't, they wouldn't come back because they never intended to pay anything. They just wanted the month free. So they were what I called disruptors. Now, if... Jimmy decided to bring along Mary, this does sound like a multi-level marketing thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, then Jimmy would get a month off his um, membership as well. So you can imagine, it would actually take, if I got a good person that understood what business networking was all about, I wouldn't actually generate any income for two months. Now, would you believe the lifespan of somebody who comes along to do business networking panned out to be three or four months? So I found all this out the hard way and it realized that this isn't really going to be a cash cow. However, if you had 20 people in a group, then I could potentially as a franchise, the owner of the company would get three or four hundred dollars a month passively just because someone else was running the group. Yes, other people help run these groups. Now, I, when I bought the company, I inherited a master franchiser and she got 75 percent of the $59 a month then she would um, sell mini franchises to people who wanted to run these groups. And she could sell them from anything from $1,000 to $500 for somebody who wanted to start up their own group. It was just so crazy. There was so much money going around. There was 10% here. There was a skip a month here. And it was just painful. So I inherited a disaster of a company. Um, it had a 47-page manual on how to run a meeting. So I basically ripped that up and threw it over my shoulder. Well, I didn't actually. I threw it over my shoulder, got an A4 piece of paper and started fresh. If I wanted to go along to a business networking group, what format would I find great? Now, the reason why it was called Elite Six is because the last part of the meeting would break into groups of six and each person would get an opportunity to speak for five minutes each. Um, and that worked out really well because people love talking about themselves and a lot of other business networking groups may have 20 or 30 people and they get everyone to stand up for a minute and do an elevator pitch. But at Elite Six, we'd actually really get to know each other. It was really good. So here I am. I now have, uh, I think I had 14 or 15 groups. I had 150 members and um, they were all, uh, I got to know them all because I'd go visit as the owner of the company and we had a fantastic big family of people that would very rarely pay their bills on time. Now, eventually I had $8,000 of $59 a month outstanding for my members. And I couldn't get them to pay the money. We were all friends. Um, a lot of people would just say, oh, yeah, I've got to pay your bill. Oh, 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 sorry. And they wouldn't get it. And it would drive me crazy. But I needed money. I needed to pay the franchise, um, the, the facilitators, didn't I? And they, the agreement we got is we didn't pay the facilitators until we got the money in. So long story, terrible, but by introducing a $15 late fee, my $8,000 that I was getting in, I got $6,500 in within about um, three weeks just by implementing a late fee. And that was one of the best things I ever did. And that may work in your business. 
rather than giving a prompt discount, um, you know, you may actually say if you pay this invoice on due date, giving them 3% off, that might work as well. But having a late fee doesn't have to be a percentage. It just was a $15 late fee on a $59 a month. And people would quite happily actually pay that um, uh, even if they were late. And I would say if you set up an automatic payment, we'll never have that problem again. They still wouldn't set up an automatic payment. So then I asked them to lodge a credit card um, so that they could make payments. And that was the most automated system I had. So my system would send out an invoice a week before it was due. It would say, if you're paying by bank transfer, make sure it's paid by this date and then I'd reconcile it. If it was payable by credit card, it would send them out an invoice a week early saying that on the such and such date, your credit card's going to be charged. It was a great system. And also the facilitators, then I could simply put it onto a spreadsheet. I could group each of the people in each group. And a long story short, um, it made my life a lot easier. But when you're a small business owner, and you're dealing with small money, you'll find the transactions. And if you think you can sit down there and do your invoices once a month and send them all out to people, it will just kill any business. So what we did is we did this think tank meeting, which I'm about to show you. And a think tank meeting was in a room of 15 to 20 people. And we basically come up with the problem that I'm talking about at the moment. How do you get money and how do you get people to pay? And I used to break these meetings into four sections. So as people would tell us their experience, the problems, we'd give them some solutions, and then we'd have some takeaways. Now, if you are available on a Monday night, New Zealand time at 9.30 p.m., or if you're in Australia and you'd like to join us at 7.30 p.m., we're actually running think tank meetings over uh, Zoom. Now, it's available and it's free to everybody that wants to get involved. These think tank meetings, I'd record them as a podcast so you can actually listen to this meeting if you go to my website search for money you'll find the think tank meeting that's talking about getting money in now and you can actually listen to this actual meeting in real time if you like but because I know your time is valuable I'm going to um, I don't know if I did this already 12 minutes in um, I'm just going to run through some of the things that I remember when I ran the meeting so it was get money in what was people's experience um, so somebody said the job's not complete until you have the money in. And I think that is so true, isn't it? So that was somebody's experience. They said the job's not complete until the money's in. You've finished the job. You've got everything tickly-boo. And the person thinks they've got three or four weeks of using your money to get around to paying your bill because they are busy. And you've rushed in there and done the job. So to finish the job... It's a good idea, I believe, that if you're doing a job, you're going to tell a person, look, we're getting near the end of the job. We should be finished on Thursday. Uh, if prompt payment would be much appreciated. Uh, is there any issues or any problems that you may have with that? If they don't want to talk about that, you can normally start smelling a fish. Anyway, um, there's some apps that you can use to get money in. Patreon is one that you can ask people. If you're a YouTuber, you can, I have a Patreon account. I don't think anyone's ever given me money on it, but it, it's a nice, simple way. But one of the most favorite ones that I've got is one called Buy Me A Coffee. Now, Buy Me A Coffee, I think it's called buymeacoffee.com. You can set up an account there, and people can literally buy you a coffee. Not a coffee, but give you $5. Now, why is that good? I talk to people a lot, and they often say, oh, how much do I owe you for your time? And sometimes it's just not worth setting up an invoice. But I say, look, go to links.tehec.com. You'll see that my buy me a copy coffee page, and you can buy me a coffee. And to my surprise, people sometimes have bought me three or four coffees to say thanks. Uh, and it's a great wee platform where you can actually put uh, like blogs and content in it and you can make it look a nice friendly place and you can also encourage people if they want to is to do five dollars a month regularly which is really really cool so that's another wee, um, way of getting a bit of money in now so the money in now um, talk was really more about when you're trying to get money in and people aren't paying the bills what's some ways that you can get a little bit of cash flow and what's some low hanging fruit products or services that you can sell or do to get money in to get a bit of cash flow going and having a wee app where you can collect credit card details without being a credit card merchant is really really cool having good terms and conditions yes very important a lot of people go oh i didn't put anything in writing well those days are gone you just need to have a simple 
um, I have this thing called um, a letter of understanding. And when I do any website development for anybody, I email them my letter of understanding. Who owns what, what I'm about to do, a little bit about my experience and my payments um, are required either in advance or maybe 50% and then 50% afterwards. And to be honest, I'm going to share something that really worked well for me in business. I used to be a website developer. My websites used to range from anything from $2,500 up to $10,000. And what I used to do is ask the person to pay 50% up front, and then once the job was finished, they were to pay the remainder. But the job never really finished because the customer would not let you finish. <laughs> so they didn't have to pay the end. It would be painful. And the one with the gold makes the rules. You may have heard that expression before. So these days what I do is I show them a job, I charge 10 hour implements of my time. So if you want me to develop you a website, I would say, look, it's going to take me about 10 hours time. Here's the last job I did that I spent 10 hours on and this is the result. I can A to Z finish your website within 10 hours and when you want to take it to another level, you need to pay another 10 hours. And then I'll let you know when that time is up. And that has actually worked really well for me. So maybe that could work well for you. Rather than saying I've done three and a half hours and writing an invoice, why not build them 10 hours? Um, I had a lady that wanted some tuition on setting up her drop shipping website. They purchased a website from a person that purchased it from me 12 months earlier. The young lady come along and she said to me, my boss um, wants you to give me some tuition. So I said, well, you need to buy me at 10 hours. The boss come along and said, yep, okay, we'll pay you 10 hours in advance. She spent about seven hours of my time and she's never come back um, and they've never asked for the money. But if they come back and they wanted some more time, they've got three hours up their sleeve. But the problem with that, you need to keep good records of your time and what you did on that time. So you might need to keep some notes or you can use the notes section in the contact uh, part of your contacts uh, just to keep it simple, stupid. Okay, invoice quickly. If you want money in, don't muck around. You finish the job, have your invoicing done pronto. Boom, same day. And don't do pay on the 20th. Don't do pay 30 days from invoice. Do pay on completion or seven-day invoicing. It will make you a lot more money. Target Change uh, change your target audience. Now, there, sometimes you might be, um, now change your target audience. So the people that you go after to get work, you may find that you there's a different category of people out there that will buy you at, at a lesser rate. So I charge $120 an hour for my IT services. Um, I might, at the moment, I'm actually helping a friend out and I'm working in a shop and I'm getting paid $30 an hour, right? Um, but I work eight hours a day. When I'm doing my IT stuff, normally I do two jobs a day. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, you can do, um, you know, you can go after a different t um, demographic of um, money. Uh, sell extra items. What's some things that you could do that's different. Like, I don't like website development anymore because it chews up too much of my time. So what's some things that you could sell? What's some small stuff you could do? I mean, could you do, you know, the two hours tuition? Could you charge $200 for two hours of your time? And then could you go to your existing clientele and say, look, I've, I'm doing a, I, I did a um, LinkedIn course and I charged $300 uh, to do a LinkedIn course per person. And I uh, had a couple of people do it. And then I decided to do an online workshop and charge uh, $97 and you could go there and do 16 of these videos and you could learn the course. Then I could sell that course more time. Now, you might think courses are a good idea. I didn't find it that great. Yes, I sold some. But now if you go to my YouTube channel and have a look at um, LinkedIn 101, you'll see that course is actually free of charge. But buy me a coffee if you like it. And you'll find that other courses that I've done are all on my YouTube channel now and they're open to the public. So help yourself. Um, do smaller jobs to get income. Yes, now this is a really good tip. When I was a painter and a decorator, we used to do small jobs. We'd put our sandwich board outside on the street. People would knock on our door and they'd say, oh, I see that you're in the area. Would you give me a quote? And we'd walk down the road, we'd quote their place we would find that if we were on a, had our sandwich board in a residential area, we would normally get people creep, uh, waiting for us to go out to the van and um, they would ask us to quote. But when you do these big jobs, they used to tie us up for six weeks or three months 
uh, we wouldn't get any walk-in work because we're not around new people all the time. So just think a bit different. If you're looking for work and you're trying to get money in, yeah, yeah, think think a bit different. You know, how can you get yourself like business networking? It was awesome because even right today, people ask me questions. Do you know anyone who does this? And I do. Um, just be around those people that are uh, around other people who are actually doing stuff. So if I was a painter and a decorator, and one of my business networkers was an electrician and uh, or an insurance guy or maybe a real estate guy, those guys are meeting new people all day long. So don't underestimate about being part of um, a business networking group. Right, so that was people's experiences. So these aren't really my experiences. This is when I was in the think tank meeting and people were sharing their experience with trying to get money in. Now, what's the problems that people are having trying to get money in? So um, they don't want to look cheap. Uh, what is it? Uh, don't want to look cheap by having constant sales. Now, that's interesting. So... We're talking about getting money in. The problems that a lot of people can do, if you're always having a sale, then no one really respects your full price now. Now, I have an electronic shop. And to be honest, I always have a sale on. But just recently, um, a lot of the products, I haven't been having a sale on. To my surprise, people still purchase them. Uh, so you don't always need to have a sale because it could make you look cheap. That's what uh, Clients ghosting you. So if you're trying to get money in and you're, harassing your clients I don't think it should be harassing if it's your money but your clients start ghosting you isn't that a terrible thing when your client doesn't want to speak to you because he owes you money but the relationship and the communication is broken down it's just absolutely shocking computer gone dead there it is okay if you ain't got okay so if you want to get paid um, you know you've got to be on people's minds so by having that conversation when you nearly finished a job look we'll be invoicing you on Thursday uh, can I pop around and pick up payment on Friday or when do you think you'll be paying my invoice is a really really good idea I remember when I was uh, a young painter and a decorator uh, a lady I painted her room and then she couldn't find her checkbook so I decided I said look no worries I'll just sit here on your doorstep uh, until you find it you know, or we can go down to the FPOS machine and you can get me the money out if you like. I'm, I'm in no hurry, but she was already two weeks behind and I thought, no, I'm not going to let this drift and drift and drift. But if you're on their minds, you get paid. I got paid. Uh, it costs money to get money in quickly. That's what somebody said. It can cost you money. So if you give people other payment opportunities, like using a credit card, you may get credit card fees. But is that worse? If anyone wants to pay me, I sold a website for $9,000 and the guy wanted to use credit cards so he would get the points. It cost me, I think it was $300 in credit card fees. Do you know what I said? Not a problem, sir. Just get the money in. Forget about the fees is my take on it. All right, if people get used to your discounts, they want them all the time. So by offering discounts, discount is, a, is the worst thing you can do in business, unfortunately, uh, simply because um, it does make you look cheap. Uh, it comes straight off your profit line. And um, so if your material cost is $500 and you've spent $1,500 in labor and you're going to give somebody a prompt payment discount, then that is coming straight off your profit line. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend doing that all the time. Uh, don't want to upset people. And, uh, you don't want to upset people's business relationship uh, by asking for money as a load of rubbish. Of course you want to ask people for your money, but you want to make sure they're clear that how much the money is. You want professional invoicing. How many times has somebody given you a handwritten invoice these days and you're thinking, oh my God, what are they doing? Um, why can't they do this? You can print an invoice off any computer to look professional. And that we've got a thing in New Zealand called Zero, and it enables you to do invoicing and it's a lot easier. So a lot of people don't want to pay the $59 a month for Zero for invoicing that does everything, your GST and... Uh, you know, reconciling and the whole nine yards um, because they, they think they can save money by being skimped, but you're also going to cost yourself money but not being able to invoice people professionally. And taking credit cards is a great way to get money off people because they want to use their credit cards because they get points. So, yes, it might cost you money to get money in, but get money in. Don't worry about the cost. Um, overdraft costs money to service. So if you've got an overdraft and you've got... Um, we used to, when I was a painter and a decorator, we used to have an overdraft and we never really got into it. But we did once and then all of a sudden because somebody owed us money, it's now costing 
us money with our bank. And then you think, well, that's not fair. So um, yes, that is a problem. So remember that when you're thinking, should I chase the money? Any money is yours. You've worked for it. As long as you've got good terms and conditions, you've done a good job, you shouldn't... Um, um, you shouldn't be embarrassed of having to ask for money. That's what somebody said. Right, solutions. Here we go. Uh, put the full price on your invoice and show the discounted price if they pay on time. Now, that's a really, really great way of doing it, um, isn't it? So if you do give a discount and you decide that you're going to get a discount, then put the full price, say so $1,000 of full price, and if you're giving them 30% off, put less 300 so it looks like a $1,000 invoice, and then the payment amount is $700. Don't just put $700 um, on your invoice and forget that you have actually given them a discount. Show them the discount that you have given them. And it also keeps your um, credibility as how much you charge. Uh, plan to collect your debts. So what's your debt recovery strategy? I had a guy that owed me $300. Uh, he was in my business networking group and he always got behind. I always said, come on, mate, can you pay? Oh, yeah, 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 I should be getting some money in. And eventually he accumulated $300 worth of debt. I let him go. I wiped the debt. And two years later, he rang me up. Can I come back to your business networking? Sure, but the deal is that you must pay your invoices on time. And you must pay the blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so long story short, he got another $300 out of me, didn't he? And then I thought, well, stuff this, I'm going to a debt collector. They took 20% of it. It took, I think, over 12 months to get the money back. But what is your strategy for getting money that people owe you? I mean, you know, if somebody goes bankrupt who owes you money, then, uh, you know, and also talking money to people before you do the work. If, somebody, if I say to somebody it's going to cost them 1200 bucks for me to set themselves up a website and they can't look me in the eye when I'm talking money, um, then don't do the job. Go with your gut instinct. If people don't talk money, most I honestly, I don't lift a finger. I get paid in advance for everything I do, except for a, a few regular clients, which I know they always pay, uh, and I have their credit card on file. So even my mates that um, I work for, they have I have their credit card on my system, and I can generate an invoice and take the money without even getting authority on, if you know what I mean. So that's how it works. Uh, well, try to accumulate a rainy day fund that can be drawn down in case of the low months. And that sounds great, but we've had COVID lately, and even I'm skimp. I don't have a big cash flow uh, bank, um, but it is one thing to if you're stressing about money, you know when. When you've made money, put some away for a rainy day so that you can cover those low periods. That's a really good bit of advice somebody said as a solution. Be unembarrassable. It's your money. Don't you worry what people think about you. I had a lady in my business networking groups. Um, she, um, I used to charge $59 a month. When COVID happened, I didn't want to lose my members. So I, decided, I thought about what was a less point of resistance so they didn't leave and I put the membership fee down to $20 a month and then I've put it back up to $59 a month now well I've closed it down but I had one lady who came along who knew this so I offered to give I said look you can have it for $20 a month plus GST um, she was three weeks late paying the invoice and when she paid it even though I asked her to set up an automatic payment she failed uh, even though I asked her to lodge a credit card, she didn't. She paid my invoice manually and then paid the incorrect amount. She was 44 cents short. Now, years gone by, I would do an adjustment. But what I found is the following month, they would pay the same incorrect amount. And here I am continuously doing adjustments. My system sends out an invoice every night saying this is unpaid, even if it's two cents. And if you go and pay anything like your... your um cell phone bill or anything like that where you go into the supermarket you can't not pay the correct amount my systems are the same so she took a wee bit of an exception to me saying do you mind paying your 44 cents and then i um i reminded her three times to pay the 44 cents so you know and she's got 44 cents and i'm going you've paid it three weeks late you've paid the wrong amount you know what happened when she finally paid the 44 cents the next month's invoice was overdue and then when it got two weeks overdue, you know what you do? I rang her up and I said, look, I've just voided this month's overdue invoice and I wish you all the best. I don't want you in my business networking anymore. Oh, she says, oh, oh, why is that? And I go, look, you haven't paid your bill. 
um, you can't pay the right amount. I don't want. I don't want that. So, um, this is one of the things that somebody mentioned. Sometimes it's better to walk away. That's what I've learned. Those sort of people, I stress about money, and if somebody owes me money, um, it just does my head in, and I don't care, and I'm not embarrassed by it. It's my money. We had an agreement. I pay all my bills uh, in the correct amount every month. I don't have debt. Um, you know, and I don't, and if I are going to go and be part of something and pay a monthly fee, I'm well aware of how much it costs. I will ask them those questions. When is it due? Um, if I pay a year in advance, will I get, I ask all those questions. So that's what I found with my business networking. I love my business family that I've done, I've got, and I've got this awesome big business family around me today. Um, and we all understand, we all help each other out. Um, so they, you know, so I don't, it's great. All right, so let's carry on. I'm getting a bit waffly there. Have good communication. That's something really hard to do, but it's really important. Pick up the phone. You know, don't text people. You owe me money, pay me. Uh, don't email people. Don't email people, especially me. I'm dyslexic. You can't read my emails. Pick up the phone. Drop around and see them. You know, have good communication. You know, and talk to them about money. Don't be scared to talk to people about money. It's your money. And if you have got to the end of the job, and you thought, and they thought, you're going to have a misunderstanding, it's going to turn to shit, and you're not going to like it, and you won't even work for them again, and they'll go around saying, nah, 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 nah. so what you can do, have good communication, I always pick up the phone. I find that people I've upset when it comes to money, often send me a text, they often send me an email, I, you pick up the phone, and they don't answer the phone because they're busy, so if you're going to, you know, you've got to be able to communicate with people, and the best way of doing it is either face-to-face, -face or with words so there's no misunderstanding. And don't go to kill. Just go and listen. Listen to what people are doing. If they've got a if they're saying to you, well look, I I I've just haven't got any money at the moment, say, look, that's fine. When do you think you'll be able to pay it? And they'll give you a date. And say that's fine. I'll 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 look forward to seeing it on the fifteenth. You know, is there anything I can do to help you get your money out? You know, whatever it is. All right, so um uh, plan for problems before they happen. Yes, prevention is better than the cure. Isn't that so true? Know the value and hold your stand. Right, know your value. You know, you know, the lady that didn't pay my bill the right amount. The lady that um, uh, couldn't pay, set up an automatic payment, even though she said, that's not a problem. And she, oh yes, I don't know why people, this is literally what she said, I don't know why people don't set up automatic payments. Ha, ha, ha. And then she didn't do it herself. You know, and then I say, well, look, if you want right here and right now, I can just set up your credit card details. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, no. And I know. And I'm thinking, I should have gone with my gut instinct straight from that day one. But I still do it. And I'm sure that you've done it as well, being a small to medium sized business. When you're trying to get that money in, you know, you just some people are just hard work. So it causes you a lot of stress. But hey, if you plan and have good planning, good communication uh, before it happens, it's going to be really cool. Know your value. They don't value you if they don't pay you. That's really the truth of it. Uh, have a go-to product. So this is what people said at the end of the meeting. What takeaways did they have? Have a go-to product. And I probably couldn't stress this enough. Is have a product or a service that you can quickly sell. Now, it's all very well getting the big money in. But is there something small that you could offer people? You know, is there something that you could, uh, ooh, um, you know, can do that brings in money? Now I have a drop shipping um, website. I have three of them, and my partner has two of them. And we often will find products that we know sell really well. Now it's I'm in New Zealand, and it's just about summertime, and I've just started selling a few backpacks. Now I could spend um, maybe a couple of hours looking for some new backpacks to add into my website. Now I know that's good timing, and I know I'll sell them. I sold two today. So if I can sell two backpacks today, why don't I go find five other suppliers and add five more backpacks for people to choose from because it's trending. So I know that's good business sense. Um, something else I sold the other day was a wee um, clicker that you put on your steering wheel that you can change your phone music with a click of a button rather than picking up your phone. Don't know. But anyway, see them all over the internet at the moment. So it's a wee popular item. So, you, you know, that's what I do. I'm always looking for things. Another thing I've been doing at the moment is help my mate out in a shop. He wants a day off during the week. So I go look after him. Look after his shop, I should say. 
and um, the little money adds up and it makes a difference. You know, two or $300 coming in a week is $1,200 a month. And then he says, oh, do you mind working Saturday as well? So now I'm getting like, you know, a couple of grand extra coming in a month. Uh, and it really makes a difference. That little money does add up. My ex-wife used to love spending my credit card and I'd get a $10,000 credit card bill a month and I'd go, honey, what did you buy on the credit card? And she would say, I don't know. <laughs> and I'd go, I do. And I'd look at all the transactions and you'd see all the little amounts. All those little amounts that you can get in do add up to a big credit card bill. Just saying, no offense to my ex lovely ex-wife. All right, so I hope that was helpful to you. I just wanted to give you a little bit of um, suggestions and things you could do to get money in. Remember, it's your money. Having great terms and conditions is really important. Having a clear understanding of what you're actually going to do before you start the work. Um, you know, having great communication. All those things are great in theory, but sometimes it just goes wrong. And you've probably got someone, the money, we don't want the stress of money, but as you know, my YouTube channel is normally all about busting Ponzi schemes, about people getting rich. And what I see happening at the moment unfortunately, is people are desperate. Not desperate to get rich, but like me, I had to shut down my lovely business networking company and we used to enjoy sitting in groups of six and each person used to get to talk for five minutes each and we got to know each other really, really well. And it was something pretty awesome. But a lot of those businesses that I knew haven't actually survived COVID. And a lot of them have now gone and got jobs. Even myself, I've got a part-time job. I love working for myself, and I love that experience. So people are taking opportunities, hoping that they're going to bounce back. So I think things are getting better. COVID's getting, we get, got through the worst of COVID, hopefully, and um, now we've got some really good opportunities coming up. So if you're thinking about starting a business or you've got an idea in your head and you want someone to spar ideas, I really recommend coming along to my think tank meetings. They're free of charge, um, or they are at the moment if you're quick, but they're on Monday nights. And you can go to dehec.com, which is my website, or if you're in New Zealand, I'm Danny, and you go to danny.co.nz, hold your mouse across the top and you'll see um, bookings, and under there there's a link called Think Tank. And if you go to Think Tank, that's 9.30 on a Monday and 7.30 uh, on a Monday if you're in Australia, because we've got Accountable Dave, uh, Rob uh, Woolley, uh, we even had uh, Vinny from Project Frugal, and we've got another young lady coming along uh, uh, this week, and there'll be five of us, and we want to grow that back to being an online community. And we want to be, um, I, I, I've got a website for sale at the moment. A young lady wrote me up, said she's interested in buying it. An hour and a half later, we were still talking, and she said, I just, so happy to have met you because you're a like minded person, entrepreneurial thinking, and that's what we are. So come along, share your experience, knowledge, and skills with the, the lads and the ladies. And um, we would love to see you there. Um, everyone's welcome. And we're just there to help each other because right now we need to band together and help each other strategize so that we can get back um, and be good, healthy businesses again and not stress so much about money. So hopefully this money collecting has helped you out a little bit. And hopefully you might be thinking, how can I get that money from that person? He's 50 days overdue or you might think, I'm going to change my invoicing instead of the 20th of the month, instead of 30-day invoicing, I might change it to 7-day invoicing, or I might change my whole strategy of how I invoice people and do like um, payment on completion, or you might even go out there and say, I'm going to ask people to pay in advance, and you will find, um, I'm going to give you one last story. I used to, uh, when I was uh, 23, I decided that um, I was I was in a religious cult and I got kicked out of it. And I used to knock on people's doors as a Jehovah's Witness. When I got kicked out of the religion, I had nothing, except I had a, I used to work in an internet cafe in Christchurch, and I learned enough on how to set up a website. So I decided to sell everything I owned, hitchhike around New Zealand, telling people I was a mobile internet consultant. In fact, I told them I was New Zealand's leading mobile internet consultant because there's no such thing as a mobile internet consultant anyway long story short i would charge 300 dollars to set them up a web page i would scan their brochure 
uh, into I had a mobile scanner, and then I would copy the words from their brochure onto the internet. Now I'm dyslexic; I literally cannot read or write, and that's how I started my New Zealand's information network. Now I used to charge thirty dollars a month, three hundred dollars to set it up, and then when I was travelling around New Zealand again, I was um, then relocating rental cars and camper vans and literally get flown to the top of New Zealand, Auckland, and then they would give me a vehicle and they'd give me five days to get back to Christchurch and they would pay for the ferry crossing, uh, the petrol and the whole nine yards and they knew what I was doing but they were quite happy to give me the vehicle and that's when I was um, knocking on people's doors. Anyway, long story short, I built that business up to turn over uh, my best year was $475,000 and I took home $275,000 wages for one year and that's what I did. But I built that company up to being something big. But one valuable thing I did, I used to charge $30 a month to host their website. I decided I weren't making any money. So then I decided to charge $100 a month. So I put my $30 a month clients up to $100 a month. What a massive jump. You know, I lost 2% of my clients. The 2% I lost were clients I didn't want anymore anyway. And then um, I was competing with the Yellow Pages and my I was going after rental car companies. I had 45 different rental car brands that used to use me to do 99% of their internet advertising. Now that was sounds fantastic stats, but this was back in 2000 and. I don't know, 2000, uh, and um, people weren't really into the internet at that time. So they would spend, some of these companies were spending like $35,000 a month, uh, sorry, a year in the yellow pages in Auckland, Wellington, and Christchurch, and here's Danny coming along charging $30 a month. I was too cheap. So those same companies, I started to put them up to 100 and then I went up to $150, and then for new customers that come in, Instead of charging them $150, I'd start them off at $300 a month for the hosting and promotion of their website. And then I would charge them $5,000 or $10,000 to build their website into my existing network. So eventually, I was getting around about fifteen dollars to $20,000 worth of passive rental income coming in each month just from that monthly fee. And that, was, that just was a game changer for my business. Um, everyone had to set up an automatic payment. And one other thing I did that was really interesting is I used to make everyone pay on the 1st of the month instead of the 20th of the month. Because if you've got a business and they are um, paying, trying to get their money in on the 20th of the month, most people are late. On the 1st of the month, most people had a lot of money. They had all the money paid in. It was their flush period. And that's why I used to always charge automatic payment only and they had to pay on the 1st of every month. And uh, even today, I still have people pay me a monthly fee to host their website on the first of the month. So that's just my story. I'm Danny DeHeck. Hopefully you haven't got too much money outstanding. But if you have, why don't you go get some of that stuff? That's your money. You deserve it. Don't you listen to it. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit the bell and you'll be notified when the um, new videos of mine come out. And make sure you hit the like button because that tells YouTube that you like my video and they'll send it out to the masses. Hey, have a great night, evening. You're a beautiful person. Don't you forget it.